Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Shelly Carranza, and I am on the teaching team at Desmos. And I'm Jason Merrill. I'm on the engineering team at Desmos. And uh, we're really excited to be here with you to talk about uh, the Desmos graphing calculator and accessibility tools. But before we start, just some quick logistics. So the first thing is that we will be recording this webinar and we will post it um, in a couple of days at learn.desmos.com slash accessibility. Um, another piece of logistics is that we will leave some time for questions at the end of the webinar, but feel free to ask questions in the chat window as we've got Jenny Wales, um, also from the accessibility team, who will be able to help answer questions. Um, in, in addition to that, she'll keep a list of questions for us to go over at the end. So part of my role at Desmos includes work with the accessibility team, and we've recently started looking at ways to help more teachers learn about the work that we are doing to make the Desmos calculators and the Desmos activities accessible to students with vision impairments. So we're excited to share some of that work with you today. And there's a couple of goals for this webinar. So the first goal is uh, experience how the Desmos calculators can be used to support student exploration and problem solving um, for students who are blind or low vision. And then our second goal is just to increase your awareness of our accessibility tools. So here is how we will accomplish those goals. So we have an intro right now. Um, we're gonna do some math together and then uh, look at the solution to a math task. Um, we'll talk about the accessibility tools and we will have a demo and then we will end with some resources, next steps, and also time for questions. Before we dive into our agenda though, we do have a quick question for you. Um, so our question for you is what experiences have you had accommodating students with disabilities? So if you will just take a minute to type a response in the chat window. So we've got some teachers who um, are supporting students who are blind. Um, we have some teachers who are supporting students with low vision. Um, we, we, I know we have uh, a lot of uh, general education teachers in the call as well. Excellent, TVIs. Graphia, hard of hearing. This is great. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, also, some of you had shared like your specific position and where you're at. So really, really helpful to maybe help some of you make some connections as well. Um, so we see here that our students have a range of disabilities and you all have a range of experiences. And there are many ways in which we can support our students. And so our hope for tonight is that we can offer Desmos as like one way to support students that are blind and low vision. Um, I wanna pass the mic over to Jason for just a minute to elaborate on why Desmos cares about accessibility. Thanks, Shelley. So um, I think what, uh, what, what it ultimately stems from is, is one of Desmos's core beliefs, which is that math is for everyone. Uh, and so if math is for everyone, then math tools should be accessible. Um, but more than that, Desmos is um, a mainstream tool that's used by millions of students and teachers across the country. And so we're really interested in making sure that when uh, some students in the classroom are using Desmos tools, every student in the classroom can use Desmos tools. Uh, and, and there's a, an idea called um, least restrictive environment that I really like that's part of the law that governs how accommodations are made uh, for, for students in classrooms. Um, and basically it means that uh, students with disabilities um, should spend as much time with uh, their peers and learn in a similar way to their peers um, as is consistent with their education. 
Uh, and so I think that's a really good idea. And every place there's a chance to um, help students with disabilities have the same experience as their peers. Um, I think that's really valuable. Uh, so, so that's part of what motivates our work. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is uh, test equity. So Desmos has um, been integrated into uh, standardized tests in uh, over 20 states now uh, as the calculator that's used as part of the exam software. And um, these tests can have uh, important uh, consequences for students. And so making sure that everyone gets a fair chance to take the test uh, is really important. And since Desmos is part of the tests, um, we want to do everything we can to make them fair. So uh, yeah, those are a few reasons uh, that accessibility is really important to us. Thanks, Jason. Um, so uh, we, we are going to get to accessibility in the Desmos tools um, in a few minutes. But before there, uh, we're going to ask you to do some math. Uh, and the idea here is we like to have teachers do math in our workshops and webinars as a means of introducing the graphing calculator. So go ahead and consider this question. Jill is investigating offers to purchase t-shirts. What advice can you give Jill for choosing the best t-shirt offer? Um, take two to three minutes to think about this problem. And when you're done, um, write your answer in the chat window along with uh, the tools and strategies that you use to explore this problem. And then we'll come back together in a few minutes to take a look at how this might play out in a classroom with Desmos as a supporting tool. So again, two to three minutes to solve, share your answer and your strategies and tools in the chat window. Hopefully you are finishing up your investigation here in a few minutes and you'll post your response in the chat window. We'll take about another minute.
Yeah, this is great. So lots of strategies in here. Um, several people are talking about writing an equation, uh, making a graph, looking for an intersection. Um, I see some responses about creating tables first and then using a graph to uh, graph the answer. Um, this is really great. So now that you've had a chance to think about this and to share your strategy, um, what I would like to do is uh, demonstrate uh, some of these strategies that we've seen today and also that we've seen in classes, uh, demonstrate those on Desmos um, with the idea that uh, what you're seeing is how a teacher might use the stirring instruction to help students make sense of the problems. Um, and also the hope being that if a teacher is modeling the use of Desmos for students, then hopefully they would be able to use it on their own later to solve problems. So I'm going to head to uh, Desmos.com. And I'm going to load up a new graph here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to the wrench icon in the top right where it says graph settings. And I'm going to turn it onto projector mode, which can be nice uh, if you're using um, in a classroom. And we're going to leave it on that for this presentation. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top left and I'm going to add an item. And so when you add an item, you can add an expression, a note, a table, a folder, or an image. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a note because I want to have access to the information from the problem. Um, so quality tees was $30 design fee plus six dollars per shirt um, and then i'm going to add also a different note for terrific and another way that you can add a note a shortcut would be shift and then quotes we'll get you the same thing so terrific was twenty dollar design fee plus eight dollars per shirt and we'll come back to that uh, throughout the problem. Um, so some of you talked about using system of equations, graphs, or a table of values, and we are gonna look at those. Um, another way that students might access this problem, just depending on what their grade level is, um, is using guess and check. And that's also something that Desmos can support pretty well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a folder. This is gonna be the folder where we explore uh, the guess and check strategy. Um, so for the guess and check strategy, this might be where a student is thinking about um, $30 plus there's one shirt that costs $6. And they're like, that's the cost for one shirt with the first plan. And then they're just gonna add the cost of uh, one shirt for the second plan. And we just look at the numbers and we see, well, the first one's $36, the second one's $28. And I, I know which one is the better deal now. Um, I can explore pretty quickly just by changing the number of shirts. So maybe I change it to two shirts and I see still that uh, terrific is the better deal. Um, maybe I wanna go out a little bit and see what happens at 10 shirts. And I see already that when I get to 10 shirts, things have switched. It's no longer the better deal. Um, I could keep going on and on with this guessing and checking, but there's something else that I can do here, which is I can change the number of shirts to S. I can use a variable. Um, here we're calling it a slider. Decimo says, do you want to add a slider? And I say, why, yes, I do. Um, and what, one thing that I could do with the slider is I can drag it around. Right now the bounds are set from negative 10 to 10, which isn't particularly useful for this problem. Um, we know that the, the even the break-even point is somewhere between 2 and 10. Um, we also know that we can't have a, a non-integer number of t-shirts. So I'm going to make the step size one and then hit enter. Um, and here, you know, I could be showing this to students and having them uh, make sense of what's going on here. And I could have them tell me when to stop and they would say uh, to stop at five. And then I might ask them, well, why am I going to stop at five? Um, I, I really want the students to write the answer uh, interpret like the interpretation part here is just as important as finding the solution um, and then maybe we write it here so we can say five shirts cost sixty dollars or maybe i want something more specific than that but just one way for you to use here um, i'm going to close that up and uh, talk about the table of values method so we'll put that down here um, and then i'm going to go ahead and add a table um, so I could also use a table of values to explore this problem. Um, so zero shirts with quality tees was $30. And then one shirt with quality tees is 30. I could go up to 36, but um, one thing that's nice about Desmos is we can use expressions to help draw the structure. And so one shirt is $30 plus one times six. And I could go on this way. Um, two shirts is 30 plus two times six, et cetera. Um, and you know, maybe I want to go out to 10 and I can just hit enter and Desmos is kind of auto-populating up to 10. 
Um, maybe we fill all of those in as a class and students will tell me um, that 10 shirts cost 30 plus 10 times six. And the idea here is that we've built a structure which can be really useful for students when, if the goal is to help them be able to develop the equations. And so then I might ask them, how much does X shirts cost? And so they're gonna tell me that X shirts cost 30 plus X times six. Um, we can make the colors match up here. Um, so if I go to this edit list button, um, I can change the colors. Maybe I want them to both be green to match that slideshow. That's something that I can do. Um, this is also nice because I can scroll around in the graph and I can see this line going through those points. Um, but it's possible that, that that's not my goal. Maybe my goal is like, maybe students already know the formula. Um, there, and if you already know the formula, there's something different that you can do in tables that can also be really powerful. Um, and so if I already know what the formula is, I can use it to populate the table. And so I'm going to a new column, I can type 30 plus, um, I wanna take the number of shirts, which was in list X sub one and multiply that by six. I'm going to go ahead and move this over so that you can see the whole table. And so you can see the cost of each of the shirts for uh, that first plan, which is quality tees populate. Again, I could change the color to green. Um, and then, you know, if, if that's what we're working on is uh, using the formula to populate the table, then I can do the same thing for the other plan. So 20 plus uh, x1 times eight, and it populates. It's already blue that matches our slideshow very good um, and now maybe as a teacher what I want students to do is to tell me where in the table do I see my answer so if you take a look where in the table do you see your answer um, we see it where uh, I've got a 5 a 60 and a 60 and I may want students to, to interpret this for me um, I may want them to go a little bit deeper and you know go back to the original problem which is what recommendation uh, can you give the person buying t-shirts? And this is a really nice concrete way for students to see uh, how they would give the representation because you can see the numbers changing um, before and after five t-shirts. So table of value strategies there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Let's see. Pardon me. Another question I might ask is like, where in the graph do I see my answer? So I'm going to come back here. Uh, we had the equation for quality T's. Let's go ahead and write the equation for terrific. We'll make that blue. Um, and if my question is where in the graph do I see my answer? Um, I don't see it at all yet. So a couple of choices here. I can zoom out to see the answer. Um, that's not a great looking graph. I can also go back up to the graph settings and I can make the window something that's going to be more productive for us to make sense of. And so I'm just changing the X and the Y axis settings. Um, I can do things like change the step size. And so I can pick one in 10. Um, I can also do things like add axis labels. So the X axis here is gonna be the number of shirts. And then the Y axis is gonna be the total cost in dollars. Um, so uh, there we go. Now, where in the graph do I see my answer? Um, it's right here. And I can click on that and it reveals the answer of 560. A couple of other things that you might want to do. Um, I could actually add a graph label at 560. So I just added a point and I can uh, click label. And it will show me 5 comma 60. I can make that a little smaller if I want. Um, I can duplicate that. And the reason here might be that I don't want the label to say 560. Uh, well, I want one that says 560, but maybe I want students to interpret what that means and they can just add it to the graph. Um, and so maybe they say five shirts costs $60. Um, so there's a lot that you can do here. I'm going to go ahead and add one more folder. This was using equations. I'm going to drag these in there. Um, and maybe I want to have this uh, to reference later, or maybe I want to send it out to students. And so if I want to do either of those things, I'm going to go ahead and give this a title. So this is the t-shirt graph. All my graphs are saved in uh, my menu in the top left. So I can go here, I can find the t-shirt graph. If it's kind of way down low, I can use the search feature. So you can see I have a couple of t-shirt graphs from different webinars that we've done. Um, another thing that you can do is uh, up in the top right corner, we have the share graph menu. And uh, in the share graph menu, you can send this link out to students. Um, you can also print. 
like if you if it ever made sense to use these as notes, uh, the print preview is going to show the graph and it's also going to show what's in the expression list. I'm running a cancel there. Um, export image is nice. If you want to add these to worksheets, you can uh, save it or you can copy it directly from there. And I, I think that's all I wanted to share for now. So um, I'm going to pass it over to Jason. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and pass things over to Jason to talk about the accessibility tools. Great. Thanks, Shelly. Uh, so I'm going to set up my screen share here. Um, and what I wanted to do uh, is kind of run through some of the same map that Shelly showed us uh, and talk about uh, some of the ways uh, that, that we can make this accessible to uh, more students. Um, so I'll start the same way Shelly did, turning on uh, projector mode here. Um, I'm a Mac user, so uh, I'm going to use a screen reader uh, called VoiceOver. Um, and uh, if you're on Windows, there are um, uh, JAWS and NVDA are popular screen readers. We've tried to make um, our system work really well with all these screen readers. So um, if if I need to use a screen reader, if I have trouble um, seeing seeing the screen for whatever reason, um, then I can go ahead and turn on a screen reader. VoiceOver on Chrome, Desmos Vertical Line Graphic Calculator, Google Chrome Data Window, Desmos Vertical Line Graphic Calculator has keyboard focus. I'm going to turn my volume up a tiny bit there um, so that hopefully you can hear what my screen reader is saying. Audio output volume medium. Volume up. Larry Burner has left the meeting. Um, great. So here we are in the calculator. Um, and the first thing uh, I want Larry to Larry Burner has joined the meeting. I see. Uh, <laughs> We'll see how many of those we get. Um, so the first thing I want to do is uh, make a, a table here um, to start investigating this same question uh, that, that Shelly did. Um, so I'm going to focus the expression list. Expression one, Desmos graphing calculator application. And just for a reminder uh, to myself, actually, I'll, I'll make a little note here. Um, so quality T's. Enter a note. Uh, is a $30 design fee uh, and a $6 charge per shirt. And um, expression two. Okay. Enter a note. Quality TF $30 design fee, $6 charge per shirt. Insertion at end of tech. Um, expression two. So now I want to add a table. And uh, so I can add a table. I'm going to use my keyboard here to navigate up to the um, plus button here. Enter a note. Language help. Oops. Language. Enter add item. Uh, and add expression. I can choose uh, what kind of item to add. Add note. Add table. And add a table. Go one column. One table. Three columns. Three rows. Um, so I'll go ahead and populate this with um, some t-shirt numbers. So zero. zero. At twenty-three powered by functions A, B, C. Two. Select three. Select four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Select nine. Ten. Selected. Okay. Uh, and we can navigate forward and backwards uh, through the table uh, with the keyboard using like tab and shift tab. Row 10, column 2, 9, select row 8, row 7, row, row 5, four, row, row 2, row, row, two, row 1, column 2. Um, and so here I'll, uh, I'll write down some of the t-shirt prices. Um, so zero t-shirts, the initial fee is $30. 1, select it, row 2, column 2. And uh, then two t-shirts is $36. Six. Row three, column two. And 42. Two. Row four, column two. 48. Eight. Row five, column two. Five. Six. Row six, column two. Sorry. Row five, six, selected six. Four, six, selected. Six, selected zero, zero. Row seven, column two, six. Row eight, column two, so two. Row nine, column two, seven, eight. Okay, um, so we filled out the table here uh, and we can navigate through it and hear uh, what, what some of the numbers are. Eight, selected. 78, selected. Eight, row seven, selected. 72, selected. Se six, row seven, column one, six, six. Content selected, 66, selected. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, first use this button here to um, help me uh, see what's on the uh, to see what's in the table. Graph viewport updated. And now I'm going to do a, a kind of a fun thing here. 
Um, so I'm going to turn on audio trace, uh, which uh, will help me get an audible representation of this table. Um, so the way to turn on audio trace is uh, on, on the Mac is option T. Oops. 30 selected. Audio trace on. Use arrow keys to navigate. To hear the graph, press H to disable audio trace. Press option plus T. Expression 2 column 2 point at X, 0, Y, 30. So I'm here in audio trace. And the first thing I'm going to do is press the H key to hear uh, uh, audio summary of everything in the graph. Playing graph. Jenny Wales so to everyone. everyone. System dot. If you have any questions as we're going, let right. me know. Um, OK, let's hear that one more time. Audio trace off. 30. Audio trace on. Use arrow keys to navigate to playing graph. So the way audio trace works is like we hear um, a sound that's uh, sweeping from the left to the right. And every time it intersects a point, it plays a, a pitch that tells us about what the points are doing. Um, so we heard a, a series of uh, pitches with increasing tones, and we can kind of get a sense that this is an increasing function. Um, I can also use arrow keys to hear coordinates of these points. Point at x, 1, y, 36. Point at x, 2, y, 42. Point at x, 3, y, 48. Point at x, 4, y, 54. Um, Great. So, uh, so that way we can um, both hear a summary of the entire curve and also um, go Peter through. Peter Pedo has left the meeting. Go through individual uh, points uh, to hear their coordinates. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and add one more column to my table here. So, I'm going to exit Audio Trace. Audio Trace off. Edit Y. So, edit text 23 power by. So, this time um, I'm going to enter a formula for T Rific. Uh, to fill out the rest of the table. Um, so the formula for t -rific was a $20 design fee and an $8 charge per shirt. So we can enter 20. Zero. 20 has plus, plus 8, 8 x, x 1. Subscript 1 baseline. 20 plus 8 x subscript 1 baseline has. Um, and that will populate the table uh, with the rest of the, the values here. Um, so. Um, so, so now I can tab through the table if I want to hear uh, what the different shirt values are and start to think about like where this trade-off point would be for the shirts. 1, 30, 36, 2, so 42, 42, 3, selected, 48, 48, 4, selected. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, audio trace the, uh, the second column here also. 54. Um, all right. So audio trace on, use arrow keys to navigate. To hear the graph, press H. All right, so um, I'll, I'll again press H for our second column. Playing graph. Um, and really audio trace for these two functions sounds pretty similar. So like one thing to realize I think is that um, this audio trace feature uh, does give you uh, a nice view of the shape of a curve. Um, but it's not always the easiest for knowing really detailed information about a graph. So like as you're incorporating it into your plans, I think it is important to know that it's really good for um, understanding some things about a curve and not always the easiest for making really subtle distinctions between curves. Um, I also want to try one more way of modeling these two functions here, um, or these, these two t-shirt plans, uh, and we'll, we'll do those with, with math mathematical functions. So I'm going to go down to a uh, new Audio trace off. And we'll model quality t's as um, the line 30 Zero. plus, plus six, 6 x. Thir x. 30 plus expression 4. And we'll model t rific as um, 20 Zero. plus times 8, 8 x. x. Oops. 8 times plus 8 x. 20 plus 8 x has graph. To audio trace, press option plus t. OK, so I'm going to try audio tracing one of these, uh, these two curves here. This is the terrific curve, 20 plus 8x. Audio trace on. Use arrow keys to navigate. To hear the graph, press H to move between expressions. Press Command plus UB dash arrow or. OK, so I'll, press, uh, I'll go ahead and press H here to hear the whole graph. Playing graph.
So there's one feature there that I want to call out, which is that there, there is kind of a, a pop sound uh, in the middle of the curve. Let me let me play it one more time, uh, and and you can listen for that. Playing graph. And what the pop represents is an intersection of two curves. Uh, and we can hear where that intersection is uh, when we're in audio trace, pressing tab and shift tab moves through special points of interest. So I'll press tab to hear one of those. Intersection with expression 3 at x, 5, y, 60. Um, and so, so uh, let's, let's hear the other points of interest also. Intercept at x, 0, y, 20. Um, so the first point of interest is, is the intercept um, 0, 020, and we can interpret that as uh, what is the base fee, how, how much do they charge before we buy any t-shirts. The second point of interest here um, intersection with expression free edit. Is, uh, is, is really interesting to solving the problem. So this is telling us um, the crossover point, uh, the intersection between these two curves, uh, five t-shirts for $60, um, is the place where the two plans are the same. And, uh, below this point, uh, one plan will be ahead. Above this point, uh, the other plan will be ahead. Um, so, so the points of interest can be really interesting uh, for, for solving mathematical problems like this. Um, so I want to show uh, one, one cool newer feature here, uh, which is that um, if we want to emboss uh, what we've done here to um, a tactile graphics embosser, uh, so that we could have like a tactile experience um, uh, of what we just did. Uh, we can do that here through um, the share graph menu. Audio trade, HTTPS colon slash slash www.desmos.com slash calculator slash. All right, so from share graph, um, we have a few different uh, options. Uh, and one of them is going to be export image. Copy, print, export image, link. Close dialog link, export your graph, graph settings, zoom in, zoom out, thin, selected um, block, median square. And so uh, from, from exporting graph settings, we, we have ways to make visual images. Um, but in addition to these, there's several options for tactile graphics embossers. Um, so I'm going to go uh, through Small, and choose one of these. Large, large, VP Max slash Columbia, 8, VP Max slash Columbia, 11.5 XM. We have a VP Max here at the office. Um, and so if I choose to make an image for this embosser. VP Max slash Columbia, 11.5 XM. Um, I get an image uh, that has, um, first of all, different darknesses will be different dot heights um, that I can feel on the paper. And also, um, all of the labels on the graph are replaced with Braille. Uh, so I should just be able to save this image uh, and print it directly to my tactile graphics embosser. Um, that's a feature that we've added this year. I'm really excited about it. Would love to get more feedback uh, if you're able to use embossers, how it's working for you in the classroom. Close dialog link. Um, so I want to show a couple other things here. Um, Expression two. So um, if you're using a screen reader, navigating uh, with the keyboard instead of the mouse is is really useful. Um, and so to make this work, um, we have some uh, shortcut keys that can be really handy for making it faster um, to do certain things. So like before I added a table, I went up to the add expressions uh, menu by tabbing to it. Um, but if I want a faster way to uh, add a table, for example, um, there's a nice summary of uh, all the keyboard shortcuts that we support um, that you can access here with uh, command slash or control slash on Windows. So I'm going to type command slash. Close dialog link, keyboard shortcuts, Windows short. And this reminds me about all the different uh, keyboard shortcuts that there are. So I can see that if I want to add a table, that's control command T down here, uh, no, let's see, add a table. So I'm gonna quit um, out, of, out of this menu. Escape, enter a note, quality TF expression two. And if I wanna add a new table in this expression, uh, I can just do control command T. Add table. Um, so that's a really good uh, handy shortcut guide. Um, there's also uh, some really thorough documentation that I'll talk about when we go over uh, resources at the end. Um, one more thing I want to mention uh, along similar lines. Row two, row three, row four, um, column one. Is, expression three. Uh, so when you're writing uh, mathematical equations, um, and actually I'm going to go ahead and uh, get us back to our home uh, viewport. Graph zoom default. And maybe I'll just um, turn off uh, 
what we've done so far. So um, if I just want to make a parabola like y equals x squared, um, I can type that in with y, y equals, equals x. x. Y and, equals x. And then to do the superscript, um, I, I enter a caret or it's shift six on a, on a lot of keyboards. So I'll go ahead and write uh, caret. Superscript y equals x. And two. now I can, now I can do y two. equals x superscript two baseline has graph two audio. And I want to mention a couple of things about this. Um, so first of all, uh, getting to a superscript is a keyboard command that uses caret. Um, all the other math notation that we support also has keyboard shortcuts. And so if I want to write Actors. something like um, square root of x, uh, I can type sqrt. Sqrt x. Um, y equals x superscript two baseline start root x and root has graph to audio. Uh, and so yeah, all the notation we support has a way to enter it uh, using only the keyboard. Other thing I want to point out is um, how the screen reader is reading these equations out. Um, so it's uh, it read y equals x superscript two baseline start root x and root as graph. Um, so it's trying to describe the notation in a, in, in a way that um, is nice and unambiguous. It tells us exactly how things are laid out. Um, we, we roughly followed a system called MathSpeak that's like if you made a Braille version of this equation, uh, closely corresponds to every Braille cell that you would write. Um, so let's let's hear let's hear this curve. Uh, or let's let's hear y equals x x squared also, just because I think it's a little bit interesting to hear a couple more um, things in audio trace. At start root. Y equals X superscript two baseline has graph to what? So before I play this, maybe make a prediction in your head about what it might sound like. Audio trace on. Use arrow keys to navigate. To hear the graph, press H to move between expressions. Pre All right, let's hear this. Playing graph. All right, one more time. Playing graph. And just for some variety, let's hear one more kind of function. An audio trace on expression four. Uh oh, X left X right parenthesis cosine left parenthesis X audio trace on. Again, maybe uh, think to yourself what this might sound Susan like. Susan Noster goes to everyone. Arrow keys to navigate. Slow it down. Graph. Press H to move between expressions. Press Command plus U P dash arrow or Command plus down dash arrow to disable audio. Playing graph. So there we heard two pops because of the two intersections. Um, and there was a question, I think, which is, um, how do you control the speed of audio trace? Like if you wanted to play it faster or slower. Um, so there's a way to do that. Um, I don't actually remember it off the top of my head. Uh, but the way that I always answer these questions for myself, I'm going to exit audio, audio trace, trace off. and again, bring up this um, sort of cheat sheet for uh, keyboard navigation. Um, so I'll press command slash to bring this Close up. Close dialog link. Keep. And I will find um, the uh, section about audio trace. And um, somewhere in here, uh, there should be something about um, adjust playback speed. So OK, uh, option one through five would let us hear um, audio trace at different speeds. So. Um, the graphing calculator has a lot of functionality. I think there's a lot more we could talk about here. Um, but I actually want to switch over um, to our scientific calculator to talk about uh, one, one more topic. Um, so let's, let's take a look here at the scientific calculator. Um, sorry. The expression one. Zoomed in, zoomed in, zoomed in, zoomed in. Chrome has new window. So this is the Desmos Scientific Calculator. Um, and I'm going to, um, so, so this, this is an environment for maybe students at younger ages um, so who are thinking about ca doing calculations with uh, numbers. So the graphing calculator, I think, um, when you're doing algebra and thinking about the Cartesian plane um, uh, can, be, can be really good. But when you're just doing simple calculations, um, the scientific calculator can uh, be a nice, simple environment for that. So the first thing I wanted to do was do a really brief demo of the kinds of things that you can do in the scientific calculator. Um, so I'm going to pose a little scenario here, uh, which is that I'm going to the donut store, and I want to buy uh, three dozen donuts. So if I want to buy three dozen donuts, how many donuts is that? 
So uh, I can type in three times 12. Three times two. Three times 12 equals 36. Uh, and here that that's uh, 36 donuts. Um, and so if I know the donuts cost 40 cents each, uh, how much will they cost in total? So I'm going to go to a new expression here. Expression two. Um, and so the total cost is going to be the total number of donuts, uh, which is the answer to the previous question, times uh, 0 0.40, 40, 40, 40 cents. So I can hey, type A and S, S, which gives me S the answer 36. to the previous expression. Uh, ANS times, times 0.4. And 4, 0. And times 0 0.40 equals 14.4. All right. So if I want to get um, three dozen donuts and they're 40 cents each, that's uh, $14.4 or $14.40. Um, but actually, today there's a 20% off sale. Uh, and so how much will the donuts cost me uh, with this special sale? So on the next line, we're going to take the cost uh, and find 80% of that. So I'll go ahead and type that in. Expression three, zero, Z, candidate list percent of 80% of NS, 80% of N equals 11.52. All right, and so because of the sale, 80% uh, of 14.4, uh, the donuts cost me $11.52. Um, so, okay, one more question. Um, I actually have $15 in my pocket. Uh, and so I'm wondering, like, I was only going to get three dozen donuts, but because there's a sale, maybe I could afford four dozen donuts. Um, so, so let's go try to try that out. Display expression, expression, help, link, expression one, three times 12 equals 36. That's more scientific. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and edit this first expression uh, from three times 12 to four times 12. Two, one, times th four, four times 12 equals 48. Okay, and so now I'm getting four dozen donuts is 48 donuts. And um, once I've made this change, uh, the answers to all of my other calculations change also. So now that I'm getting four dozen donuts, um, we can find out what the cost would be uh, without the sale. Expression two and times 0 0.40 equals 19.2. Okay, and with the sale, uh, so it's $19.20 without the sale. And with the sale, displaying as decimal, expression three, 80% of n equals 15.36. All right, and with the sale, it's fifteen dollars and thirty-six cents. So unfortunately, my my fifteen dollars couldn't quite get quite get me four dozen donuts, um, but I can still get three dozen. So I just wanted to point out like a little bit about how to use a scientific calculator and some design decisions that I think are important here. Um, so one thing is that for sighted users, we're displaying things using like a math notation that should look really similar from books, um, and then also like we're displaying. Um, everything that you've punched in, in a way that's easy, easy to see and easy to refer back to, um, which if you compare to a kind of a pocket um, scientific calculator where after you type in parts of the calculation, they go away and you can't see them anymore, makes it a lot easier for me to see if I've made a mistake um, and uh, also a lot easier um, to, to make an edit if I made a mistake or even if I didn't make a mistake, if I just want to change the problem that I'm thinking about a little bit, um, easier to do that. Uh, and so I think some of these um, some of some of these usability features um, are that are important for everyone are, are also accessibility features because um, make there's a lot of cases where making something easier to use for everyone also means that it's easier to use um, for people who are using a screen reader or other assistive tech. Um, so I just wanted to kind of point out a little bit about the scientific calculator for that reason. Um, but I also want to show off a, a, another um, way of accessing math in the scientific calculator, uh, for um, w which is Braille. So um, there's really wonderful uh, math code for Braille uh, that gives you uh, ways of representing um, all kinds of math called, called the Nemeth Braille code. And it can be really useful to have for the, for the same reasons that having a visual written notation is useful. It can be really useful to have a written notation uh, for mathematics for people who read Braille. Um, I think having a written notation helps you refer back to the same thing over and over again. It helps you um, be able to think about things symbolically. And so um, if you want to use Braille, I'm going to go ahead and clear the calculator here. Expression one. And I'm actually going to temporarily turn off the screen reader uh, for this portion uh, because it, it won't be as useful. Um, F5, voice over off. So I'm going to turn my screen reader off. 
Um, and I'll type a simpler equation here, like 2 plus 2. Um, so we have 2 plus 2 equals 4. If I want to work in Braille, um, I can go over to the settings menu and turn and, and pick a Braille mode. Um, so I'm going to pick uh, Nemeth. There's also another Braille math code called UEB. Uh, the difference between them is kind of an interesting discussion that I won't get into today. Um, but we support them both. So, so I'm going to pick Nemeth. And when I enter uh, Nemeth, uh, then all of the work that I've already done um, is still displayed visually, but also translated uh, into Braille dots I can see on the screen. And if, um, if you're not too familiar with using Braille on a computer, you might wonder how it helps to have Braille displayed on a screen. Um, so I'll show real quick um, a dynamic Braille display. So this is a device that lets you read and write Braille on a computer. Um, this, this one is uh, one made by HIMSS called a Smart Beetle. And what you can see on the bottom is um, several uh, cells with little actuated pins. And each pin is a dot in a, in a Braille cell. Um, so when I plug this into the computer, um, the pins will show me like whatever piece of text I'm reading. I can feel that with my finger. Across the top, um, there's uh, buttons for each of the, each of my fingers, and by pressing those in in combinations uh, that correspond with uh, the dots in a Braille cell, I can enter any Braille cell that I want to. Um, so if I have a device like this for um, accessing Braille. Uh, then I can use it um, with the scientific calculator here. Sorry, the managing tabs is harder when I have Zoom going. Okay, here we are. Um, so, so that's how I, I could use the calculator uh, with a refreshable Braille display. One other thing here is um, since I am using a QWERTY keyboard, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on an extra mode here, which is um, six key Braille input. And basically what this lets me do is use SDF and JKL on my keyboard uh, the same way that I would use those buttons at the top of a refreshable Braille display. Um, so let's try one more calculation here. Um, so I'm going to enter, we have some examples here for people who aren't familiar with Braille to kind of help you get started. Um, so I'm going to just enter this second example here. Um, so the uh, first, sim first symbol here means uh, we're going to type in one half. The first symbol here means start fraction. Uh, and so I'll type that. Um, it has, OK, the, the well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I, I can type that in by pressing a combination of SDF and JKL keys. So I'll go ahead and key that in. This is start fraction, uh, 1 divided by 2 n fraction. And uh, on my Braille display, uh, right now I can read what I've typed in. If I want to read the answer, I can press the tab key. And now this will show me the answer uh, on my Braille display. Um, so, so there's a couple design considerations that we've made with um, de designing this Braille calculator. Um, and one of them is um, that we actually wanted it to have a, a, a nice visual representation. And so we're showing both uh, the Braille dots and visual notation. And we think that's important because we want this tool, like all of our tools, to um, enable collaboration between people. So it could be collaboration between students who are peers, and, and maybe one of them is sighted and one of them is blind. Or it could be collaboration between a TDI who's helping a student uh, learn the Nemeth Braille code, uh, in which case seeing the, the Braille dots could be really helpful um, if you wanted to remind someone, uh, oh, I think you meant this symbol, but, but actually, um, you typed another symbol. Being able to see all of these different representations at once, uh, I think, should really help uh, people collaborate on, on calculations, which we're really excited about. So that's kind of a quick uh, whirlwind tour of uh, using Braille in the scientific calculator. Um, we also have a four-function calculator where Braille is enabled. Uh, we don't yet have Braille in the graphing calculator. Um, I'm I would really like to have Braille on the graphing calculator, uh, so I hope that's something that we'll be able to do uh, in the near future. But just a heads up that so far, Braille is only supported in our two simpler calculators, the, the four function and scientific calculators. Um, so I think that's a lot of the material that we wanted to cover today. Um, I'm going to go over and talk about uh, a couple more resources um, that you can take a look at if you want to learn more. Um, so we have in the slides here, which we'll share out uh, a resources page. Um, so 
there's um, a couple different ways to learn about accessibility. learn.desmos.com slash accessibility, which I'll show you in a second, is a, kind of a simpler getting started page. Um, good for sharing with someone uh, on their first pass through. And we also have a learn page about Braille. And then desmos.com slash accessibility um, has really thorough documentation on, on everything we've done and, and how to set it up. So let's, let's take a quick look at, at what's at both of those places. Um, so this is, uh, sorry, this is the um, accessibility learn page. Uh, there's a nice intro video that shows a couple of the things that I showed you in the graphing calculator, including um, how to use uh, equation editing with a screen reader and how to use audio trace to hear audio representations of graphs. We have um, links to some information about setting up your screen reader to work best with Desmos. Um, and a couple other uh, links you could follow to learn more. Um, the Braille page uh, also shows uh, learn.desmos.com slash Braille shows um, some of the things I showed off about how to enter and read Braille uh, in the four function and scientific calculator. Desmos.com slash accessibility here um, starts off with a simple video and why accessibility is important, but has really um, nice thorough information about everything you can do. Um, this typing symbols part is pretty useful. Uh, I mentioned a, a, a way to type some of the symbols we support, but this has, has all of them in this table. Um, and finally, I want to mention uh, one more thing, which is our Desmos classroom activities. So these activities are designed to be run uh, by a whole classroom at once, and each of them is designed to um, use tech to give uh, teachers and students something interesting to talk about. Um, so the, the students will do some work, and then we have um, ways for a teacher to uh, see the work and pull, pull some of it up, ask questions about it. Um, and so one thing I wanted to show is um, how to find some of these activities um, we've, we've gone through and reviewed and, uh, and selected ones that we think work really well with a screen reader. Um, if a student's working independently, I think potentially any of the students could be appropriate for students um, who are blind or visually impaired or use screen readers, but um, some of them might require the student to get sort of more help to use. Um, but, but, so, but, but the activities um, that are easiest to use with a screen reader, you can find by searching for a screen reader. And uh, any activity that you look up, um, we have kind of a screen reader friendly tag here, which will let you know that this is an activity that we've gone through in a screen reader and, and we think will work really well. Um, so I think I'll uh, now turn, um, turn it over to Shelly for some closing remarks. Sounds great. Oh yeah, let me, do you want the screen share back, Shelly? Do I have the screen share? I guess you do, yes. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Um, so to close things out, uh, we, we have six minutes left. Um, we'll definitely take some questions, but in case you have to leave um, a couple of things, I'm going to post the link to the slides in the Zoom chat window. And then also, um, if you wouldn't mind giving us some feedback, that's really helpful for us. Um, and so I'll post that link as well in the Zoom chat. And then again, I will leave questions here in a minute, but um, definitely feel free to reach out if, if you have additional questions. Um, our emails are here on the slides. We'll also post them in Zoom. Um, and also Jason mentioned earlier that we're always interested in getting feedback on our accessibility tools. Uh, the tactile graphics uh, is, is a newer one for us. And so if, if you would be interested in giving us feedback on that as well, uh, reach out to one of us via email. Um, so uh, posting, I'm gonna post these these two links in the Zoom chat window right now, and we'll start taking questions. And so if you have questions, feel free to add those also to the chat um, window. I have a question. Is there a possibility to um, post the link in the email if we were calling in so we can get it if we called in? Um, I don't know if I can send an email out to people who signed up. Um, let me write myself a note. If I can send out an email, if there's a way to do that via Zoom, I, I will do that. Okay, I just was wondering, there was the email that came so we could sign into Zoom. I didn't know if that was attached. That was the same ability. Thank you. Yeah, no problem.
Okay, so the survey is in the chat window and then also a link to the slides if you're interested and we'll get a couple of emails there for you as well. And Jason and Jenny and myself will hang out for a few minutes um, until 7 p.m. if people have questions, but we know that it's getting late. And uh, if, if it's time for you to sign off, just wanted to say thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so we've got a question. Do we know if by using share graphs, if I can download and send to my transcriber? Um, Jason, you yeah. can, yeah? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think, okay. Uh, when, when, so, so if you use the share menu and you create a, a image for the tactile graphics embosser, um, there's actually going to be two links there. Um, and one of them uh, will let you download an image for the, for um, embossing uh, image of the graph. Another one will let you uh, emboss all of the equations. So I think that comes out as a BRF file, which is a, a common way to represent Braille to be embossed. Um, so yeah, if you pick uh, any of those embosser options, Shelley, I think we should be able to see um, two download buttons. Yep, download Braille equations and download PNG. And actually, this also works in the scientific calculator there. I was showing where we could do the Braille calculations. Uh, when you're in a Braille mode, we'll give you a link to download the equations as Braille if you want to print them out. Okay. Um, I was told that the link is not working, so I'm going to go ahead and copy in this one. There's the slides. Not sure if it was the slides or the survey, but those are both in there again. Okay, it's 7 p.m. over here in California. Uh, time for us to, to sign off. Again, thank you so much for joining us and feel free to reach out anytime if you have questions. Good night. Thanks, everyone.